Hi folks, we are here at one of the coolest shops I've ever been to with Devin Dupuy. Devin, thanks for having us. This is insane. Yeah. This is insane. You want to show us around? Yeah, sure. Um, and just see the machines? Yeah, let's see the machines. Actually, it's pretty cool too. Uh, sweet, awesome timing because you're looking at some pretty gnarly sized forklifts because there's something outside that maybe we'll go pick, take a peek at. Evo 60 linear machine. So linear machine means no ball screws, right? Yeah, no ball screws on the X, Y. The Z is still a ball screw, but it's uh, it's a higher feed, a higher pitch. It's insanely fast. So yeah, it's, it's insanely fast. So. Yeah. Yeah, table Sick. table moves pretty slick. You've been using it. It's a new machine, right? Yeah, I've only, I'm only made a couple parts on it so far. Um, just getting you know my po my post and everything dialed in for it. You know everything seems to be working good. Uh, we're waiting actually on some tools for the blocks and stuff behind us. Yeah. Um, and yeah, as soon as those tools shows up, we'll we'll start we're running these things. Roll. Yeah, we'll probably fire the fire the pyramid in there. Oh, uh, sweet! Another, another, awesome. another vice. So. This is this was actually a rush. Fifth Axis sent it to us uh, raw. Oh we yeah, had to, we had to get it anodized. That's uh, funny. Well, we wanted to get it anodized. So but. you just drop it on the table. You don't have to tram it in because you got dynamic offsets. Yeah, yeah. We, with the 840D, we can just basically align the part to the machine instead of you know instead of the other way around. And so. You said 84. That's the Siemens control. Yeah, the Siemens Siemens 840 within the Silos. Yeah, it has a well, it has a Silos interface, but mainly you know what's what's doing the whole job is the is the Siemens side of it here. So so folks like. For us on our Tormox or Haas, we just have a Haas control or Tormox control. This has a Siemens control, but then uh, DMG Mori puts their kind of interface on top of it that, that lets you kind of interact with it, deal with the screen, controls, interfaces, programs, monitoring, yeah, uh, oh, that yeah. kind of stuff, right? Yeah, you have um, on here like, you know, job manager. Obviously, this is a new machine. I don't think there's anything in here. Yeah. Um, but job manager, scheduler, job assistant, it shows you all your tools in there. Obviously, your control, you can remote to a computer. It has a That's really sick. nice text tech calculator yeah yeah so it has you know milling turning um fit calculator all the you know algebraic calculator yeah, yeah. everything like that so all that stuff all the power settings and everything um documents all the machine manuals are actually on mm -hmm. the machine so celos user manual um you know machine manual if you want to search something you can just search it right here you know like uh m m8 and it'll it'll pull it up yeah. and show you kind of you know where where they are and you can keep cycling through. Um, I know Amish on his, he's got a smaller version, I think of that machine. He yeah. was showing like how it pulls up the maintenance and examples oh, yeah, and all yeah. that stuff, like super it, cool. It is, it is a little annoying, Maybe annoying. but <laughs> yeah. on, the, on the service agent, basically all the, uh, so pending tasks will show up. We keep our machine pretty maintained, but the it will pop up. And then on this main screen here, it will show a blue icon here saying service pending. And it's, it's not like machine service, it's just like tasks, like clean the window, yeah, yeah. double check filters, you know, make sure, you know, inspect coolant lines and everything like that, you know. Yeah, these machines like to be uh, well. They like to be well maintained. Yeah, yeah there's, a, there's a service log in here that has, that has all, the, all the tasks, you know, that have been performed, when they were performed, by who they, who they were performed yeah. by. Um, there's also one, one thing that's pretty cool is these, uh, so these service keys, there's different keys, different key levels right oh, here. Yeah. So this is, the white ones are the master keys. I, I basically, when I set up the machines, I run the master key and then I'll put a setup key in there. So it restricts the level. So you can't change offsets more than a certain amount. You can't really? edit programs. You can't do anything like that. And then it also allows you like to change the modes over here. Cause normally like a level one operator has to be in level one to yeah. run. But um, like in level, so you couldn't jog the machine right now, but if we put it in level three, there's actually an acknowledge button over here. And if I have it in jog mode, I can move the machine now with the door open. That's sick. So there's only levels one, two, three, and four. If Rob Lockwood is here, he's a level 71. I don't, see. So we got level. another, we got another key for got Rob key. Okay. if he's here. So yeah. Look at that. Yeah, it's the table, table spins the 180. Look at so that. actually the, the, w the way the kinematics are on the machine, the 180 is actually like a positive 20 or 30. Um, oh my God. So to get it to be, to get the table to be 90, it actually spins up to 120 to get it to, to, get, to, get it to be 90. And then you know, obviously the table, table and everything spins. It moves a lot faster than this. This is just in jog mode, obviously. But. Is there a, can you run an empty program or something uh, just to show the machine I'm moves? A, I might have a program in here still. I tell you folks, these linear machines, this is, insane we did a, a card here to the video we did of that matsura demo where they had a i think they had a linear machine very different than that it was a really small you know work envelope but four thousand inches per minute uh rapids that's insane 
we're just going to see if you can pull up some empty program to just show kind of the profile. I mean, this is, uh, it's interesting. We'll go see the uh, mono block and then we'll look at the other machine. Very different designs. This is the knuckle joint. So it's got, look at that. This was just doing some profiling in a pocket. We're, we're actually cutting carrier material off of a part. Okay. Real quick, a little bit of. And this is all fusion tool pads. This is all fusion. This yeah, we sick. Fusion runs all our machines. It's insane. That's awesome. If you guys haven't checked out Devin's Instagram, we'll put a. I don't think we can do a card to Instagram, but we'll put a video, a link in the video description. But he's got some really awesome uh, stuff on his Instagram, which is 1186mfg. Yeah. And this is an HSK? This is an HSK 63, yeah. I, we can go over to the tool crib. I'll show you the differences between them. It's, it's actually pretty slick. Woo! Holy cow, that's fast. And that's still, that was a ball screw move. Because the uh, Z's a with ball. With the Z, yeah, yes. the Z's a ball. That's still so fast. The Z's a high, the Z's a high pitch. So oh my gosh. This, this, this thing has 120, did you see the magazine on this, on the inside? Oh my, folks, hold on. Oop. So it goes and snakes up around there. 120? Yeah, 120. Let me get another view of that. Devin, this is sick. Oh my God. It'd be sicker if I could afford enough tool holders yeah, for, right? the whole, for the whole thing, so. Yeah, zero sympathy. The, uh, this, this one's also 120. This is the HSK 63 wheel. So this is your new machine? This is just the magazine from the new machine. So they have a new machine outside. It's in this giant crate, the size of a, literally the size of a house. And this is the, that's HSK 63 or 100? This is the HSK 100. 100, which is insane. Yeah, so it's, it's got two wheels. The first wheel is notched. It's missing three pockets, so it can travel to the farthest wheel. Okay. Farthest wheel is 63. So if you wanted to add more, wheels oh, on yeah. there it'd be 60 60 60 and the last one would be 63 because it doesn't have the knockout for the tool to the transfer oh my gosh i mean this 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 piece here weighs more than most machines look at it oh it, here's the double arm that does the tool transfer yeah that's, look at that. that that's what does the tool transfer well, and then it, walk around. it passes through the uh oh my gosh when you buy a machine this big too, it comes with a ladder. It comes with a ladder. <laughs> <laughs> it's got the tool uh, tool brushes and everything to clean the HSK 63. Insane. In our emo video, card here to that, we saw some HSK 100 tool holders that were on like face mills that were on 20 inch extensions oh, yeah. and they just still tear up, that's they the, rip. That's the really crazy crazy thing about, uh, about like Cat 40 to HSK 63 to HSK 100. Cat 40 is like roughly 670 newton meters of torsional rigidity. HSK 63 is 3600. HSK 100 is 17,000. It's insane. So I'll, we we can head over here to the where we got some tools. And yeah. So actually, um, I think you you sold some of your Haas machines, but I think that's kind of what's cool about your story is you guys build up to this, starting with uh, the VF series as well as some UMCs, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. UMC 750s and uh, and whatnot. Here I got standard cat 40 tool this is the hsk 63 tool which obviously has oh, a shorter yeah. shorter shank but it makes face contact and angular contact here yep so basically the difference between this is when this is holding in there's pull studs trying to pinch this together to yep. hold it in so that's why you don't find um like cat 40 spindles or whatever with real high speeds because at the high speeds the balls want to come apart where so here, that increases. where here there's actually a thing that goes inside and it expands so right. actually the faster you go it makes the connection you know that much stronger with the tool holder so there's less yeah, force you don't need a pull stud having so, yeah, a, so something goes inside of there yeah the, and the, out. what's inside here this is a, this is a coolant tube so this basically transfers the coolant on a on a on a new on a new one there's no there's no coolant tube or anything in there huh. um you only really need it for through spindle coolant. This just helps with the blowback so you don't get a thousand PSI going into your spindle bearings. Backwards, yeah. So which grief. will happen if you don't have it in if you don't have it in there. Cool too. So that's then, a beefy holder though. Maybe. Yeah, this is HSK one hundred. So Holy this is a cow. big, big contact. Obviously you know, heat shrink holder. Uh, yeah, yep, shrink fit and everything like that. So Whoa. 
And it's funny, we were at Mari till yesterday holding some Cat 50s, which is insane because they're heavy and big, but this is lighter. And yeah, it's way well, stronger because huh? it's all hollow. It's all hollow, and yeah. yeah, I mean, this is a stronger connection than right. than Cat 50. Cool. Um, because it makes contact here on the spindle too. So unlike the oh. Haas where it's, you know, hanging out and only making taper contact, mm -hmm. it contacts on both. I will tell you, there's no difference. There's no comparing HSK 63 to, it, to, to Cat 40. I mean, the difference is- You get you, better balancing too. You could, have, you could have a 10, 12 inch tool, be cutting really crazy with it. I mean, something you could never do in a, you know, in a Cat yeah. 40 machine. Yeah. Sweet. So that's your so, shrinker? Yeah, Lind, uh, start two by Lindex Nicken. Yeah. Cool. You want to shrink something in it? Yeah, sure. It'd be awesome. Some gnarly tools. We'll put finishers. We'll put yeah. They were for for steel. Some roughers. These are some in indexable stuff. You okay being in it? Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, yeah, be in it, yeah. We really appreciate Devin letting us come by. I've been actually been hanging out with Ben Benz. If you know him from uh, his, his name is not Ben Benz, but ben. that's <laughs> his Instagram handle. He's making some really cool uh, desk lamps, but now also some flashlights. So yeah, basically, if the, if this works uh, the right time, there's basically an auto mode or a manual mode. A um, couple different ways to do this. Uh, you put this inductor thing on there, and then there's these little covers that are basically more to the size of your tool. Okay. And then. Uh, what I, what I do also before I start is I make sure that the corresponding one for this is in the cooler. And then I'll put the cooler, the cooler one in here. And then it, once we cool it, within about you know, two, three minutes, we'll be able to touch it. Cool. So um, Pun intended. just hit auto here. It's going to gonna heat up. It, oh, one, once it goes to red and it locks, yeah. then normally what I do is I pull it out because I like to set it kind of horizontal. <laughs> so I'll pull it out just like this. You've got enough time. No kidding. And I'll, sl I'll slide it in there to basically to where I want it. I might check my gauge length real quick. Sometimes Oops. it's already it's already tightened up, so you can throw a little more heat at it. And I mean, you could you could have this thing out here for 20, 30 seconds, you know, kind of Play setting it. it yeah, Sweet. get it and get in the right spot. The only thing is, is the real, real small ones. Mm -hmm. You cannot touch this at all because as soon as it touches that thing, the heat goes to it instantly. So you got to use like pliers or something oh. for this. Oh. Uh, you're supposed to use these Kev these Kevlar gloves, but right. these ones don't fit my hands very well. So and then all you do is turn this on and like. So cooling it just makes it happen faster. You could just let it idle and You could cool. just let it idle. Uh, normally when I take the tools out, um, I'd like to have more of a safety zone, but I just put them kind of by the wall just so nobody touches them. Yeah. So we'll have hot, you know, hot, one, hot ones out here or whatever. But right. it's, not, it's actually not that often that we're actually shrinking tools and putting them in there. I mean, generally we're putting stuff in there and we get really good cutter life out of the, you know, the shrink fit yep. stuff. So it goes in there and I mean, a couple months later, we'll pull it out and put, it, you know, put a new one in there, figure out what it needs to be. We know some of the guys down at, at uh, Sumitomo, so Sweet. we're waiting for HSK 100 for this five-inch aluminum face mill. You just need a holder for it. I need, yeah, I need a, I need a holder. I have an inch and a quarter here that's not big enough to hold this. Not one. big enough? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Uh, I got some even bigger ones somewhere over on a over on a pallet. But... Why is it not big? Oh. Oh yeah, because it needs. Oh it sorry, moves. I got the ID. Holy but. cow. That's about how big that is. And for, that'll go in the new machine or for, that'll go in the F? For reference, that's, you know, seven by seven by five. <laughs> that's pretty big. It's Cat 40. Yeah, that's insane. It looks like a toy. It looks like a BT-30 next yeah, to it. Yeah, it does. It looks like a BT-30. So you use that just to, to, a lot of what you guys do is huge amounts of material removal, right? On these Inc yeah, aerospace parts. Every, everything we make is really light, really thin. So yeah. and then they come in in really big blocks. I mean. We've had crazy parts, you know, come in that were a proposed 1,800 pounds of material, and the finished part weighs eight, and it's oh my God. 96 inches long. Right, right, right. Know? So it's big, big, big parts. A lot of, a lot of material removal. That's one of the, one of the bigger problems we have when we're, you know, kind of in full production on parts like that is keeping the chip bins, yeah, um, cleaned and you know, in in the dumpster and whatnot. Because this this machine fills them up pretty pretty quick. This is amazing. DMF, we saw this at Emo. I think it was a smaller, I think it was smaller. The scale is very deceiving because of your environment. But th folks, this is insane. Full five axis machine. We'll hopefully be able to see it run here in a second. The head comes out towards me in Y. This table rotates down here and you've got an A axis on the side. This is just insane. I've never seen anything like it. They were literally running this part when we walked in this morning. Um, 
I mean, taking this huge chunk of aluminum and, and whittling it down to this, and that's not done, right? No. Look at that. Look at this. They're just jogging slowly up with the, obviously, doors open right now. Um, Eric's coming out. And again, yeah. check out Devin's Instagram. He's got some awesome video showing uh, this machine in particular yeah. going to town. This is the one we've had, we've had the longest for about, what, four, four or five months now? But yeah, and, th and this, this thing is a, is a big tractor, but it's incredibly fast for how big it is. Uh, do you, do see you if I can whip that up that program. program yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. The doors themselves, I mean, just massive. Look at that. <laughs> oh my. That's insane. That's insane. Oh. So if the head can do it, the table can And the follow. head can fall. That, that's. And yeah, we can switch this to be the A to A. That'll be the R over here on the left? Yeah, there's also an A axis fiber that you can do full simultaneous five axis. That one doesn't quite have the speed of the other one, though. Wow. Look at the size of the chips that they've been pulling off of this thing. Um, you, you would think, I would think as a layman, that when that head is extended out and wide, that you'd lose rigidity. But that thing was wailing. Oh, dude, it goes all the way to the, yeah. Dude, look at that. Dude. Look at that. Devin, that's insane. The only thing I would say, if you get these machines, make sure you get it with a, with a cool wash down. It's not, it's not standard. Oh, really? It doesn't help very much, but I got, a, uh, I got a little sub-program to come in with a with an empty HSK uh -huh. fit and actually blow what? the whole table off. Can you, you, can you do a tool change with the door open? No. Can no, you do one? Can. Yeah. can you do one anyways? Yeah. So we can. I'll I'll, I'll put it kind of over here, wherever wherever it, wherever it is at. Um, Actually, we can. I think if Devin let us, we can walk inside this machine from the back. Yeah. In a minute. Not not what it's done. Oh yeah, not just running, but but the fact that you can walk inside of a machine. There's like a hallway. This is the craziest tool change too. The tool changer's in that door right there and it follows the spindle. HSK 100, those are big tools. So anywhere the machine is in X, it's the tool changer's kind of right there with it. How many tools does it hold? 60, 60. 60. And two in the double arm one. Change. Yeah, so now we're over here on the right side. I have a little sub-program to measure the tool, though. The laser is actually pretty, pretty slick on this thing. Yeah, so instead of like a Renishaw contact probe like we've got, and they're pretty common, this has a Dabloom. Yeah, Bloom laser. Non-contact laser that can do your tool offsets, it can do a tool breakage detection, it can measure the diameter of the tool. My subprogram is just MES for measure. Can you, <laughs> turns everything on for me. The, those blooms, though, use air to keep them constantly clean and for your chips, it comes yeah. down. And it's interesting, it doesn't measure on the way down, it actually blows past it, and it measures on the way up. 
Yeah, there's a, there's a bunch of different modes actually. You can okay. have the solid beam and break the beam. Oh, okay. You can have a broken beam become solid. Okay. You can have it go from side to side. Um, there was some reason to go bro uh, broken beam to open. I yes, can't remember what the reason the, is. The, the, well, the reason for us that we found is sometimes a laser has a little bit of trouble disting distinguishing like a black oxide drill. Oh. It has a hard time seeing it, so you got to break the beam and got then it. when it's connected Reconnects. Is, is, when, is when it does it, which is just a quick change of the cycle or whatever. But that's the only issue that I found different with the contactless you know, system like that is that it, uh, you know, for the occasional time, it won't be able to find the tool because there's some sort of reflect, reflective and, you know, it can't see. The tiniest, tiniest tip on that laser is trying to, you know, basically find a plane where, where it starts and ends and if it has a hard time. You can also just change the tolerance too. We have it set to like two tenths. You can bump it up to like, you know, eight tenths or something like that, or even, even a thou and you'll get, you'll get less, you know, air like that. But, you know, mid, mid tool change and everything like that, this, the 85 monoblock actually has a, uh, it has the bloom laser on it, but it also actually has a, uh, a physical checker inside the machine. Get the chunk of it. Right there, they're literally rigging in a new machine right now. This is even bigger, it's a, it's a dual block 125? Yeah, it's a 125 dual block. Oh. So the big difference um, is the mono block here, which is this machine, is one single large casting with this uh, dual mounted trunnion, right? Oh, look at that. You really use a lot of shrink fit, huh? Yeah. yeah for, pretty much everything. Drilling, milling, wrap, every, yeah, not face mills. But. I, well, I use, yeah, I use the same tool pretty much for everything. Oh, cool. The bloom's up on the side. Yeah, the thing on the side is for turning tools. This is, this one's not an FD. They have an FD and they have an FDS, which is turning and grinding. What? Yeah, it has turning it has and grinding. And, you know, dressers in there and everything. Um, if you actually check this out, when this tool gets put away, it's going to actually check it with a physical tool checker inside the magazine. Can you do that? Yeah. Yeah, it measures cool. It measures cool. brings it in here, it's gonna, this little arm's gonna come up and check it to make sure Stop. it's not broken. So you could keep machining while it's doing it instead of tilting the table. So that's just a it, real rough check. It's, it's chipped yeah, or broken or gone. This is not, yeah, this is just the chip uh, tool <laughs> It's awesome. <laughs> Sweet. But just so it can keep machining instead of tilting it and you know, yeah. stopping your program to do a, a tool break. Were you running a part here? Uh, yeah, we were, we were just running a, running a quick part. I mean, it'll be cutting air. That's the Sandvik RAL 790? Yeah, RA, R, this is the RA, the RA 790. The, R, the RAL uh, 90 is the new one. Ah, okay, that's got it. The chips that were coming off that uh, before we started filming, they are big chips. And that's through tool. Through tool, cool. So this is just a uh, 3D adaptive clearing? This is just a 3D adaptive clearing. There's some, uh, some 3 plus 2 in here to, to, to do the ends. Positional? Got it. Then, yeah, positional. Are you testing this program out or is it just... Is yeah, this it... is something I'm, I'm setting up. Just, we dovetailed all these, finished up this morning, so we're kind of setting these parts up. And the, the, other, the last part you know, that you were here when you ran was something we were just finishing up too. That's the only problem when all the, machine, when all the machines are waiting for everybody to set them up. Yeah. But it is nice when we're doing production on all the machines. Humming, yeah, all yeah, yeah. And... Yeah, it's quiet here today, but they just they just got a machine. Make no mistake, there's uh, they've been, I know he's been showing uh, pictures of showing those chip ins that yeah, get you, filled up every few days. You can, you can check my, dump, my dumpster over there, right? Yeah.
You're just roughing it out before you yeah. throw surfacing. And so obviously while while this was running, oh my god. Look at the chips. It looks like it has really good chip evacuation though, like on the uh, yeah. They don't get stuck in the sheet metal. Yeah, I haven't set too well. well. It's got washdowns on the door. Yeah, it's really nice. Like really good washdown. So you can be setting up the other pallets on the pallet yeah, system while this is machining, huh? Yeah, while this is running, you can. Yeah, you can literally open up this door and set this next job up. That's sick. Foot pedal just lets you rotate it. Yeah, this lets you it's, rotate it, and another hand will let you lock it's it. It's the long <laughs> it won't let you shut the door if you leave it in the wrong position, but you shut Crazy. the door and lock it. You can also spin it like if I wanted to take that part out of the other one. That's pretty gnarly. Yeah. Look at that. Sick. The scope, you lose size of how, the scale of how big these are, because just insane. I mean, again, look, you know, more people are probably familiar with what a VF3 is, and you can see it over there. Insane. You mind if I go poke my head out the door at the new machine yeah, real quick? Okay, sweet. Let's go see, uh, I think it's probably in a giant cardboard box. Um, there's, they, they've been filling these up, I think he was saying more than once a week. Um, yeah, that's all aluminum. <laughs> and look at the chips. Look at that forklift, holy cow. So they've got to lift it from above, I guess. I honestly don't even know. Um, you can kind of get an idea how it works with the hydraulics there and the counterweight here, but that's insane. Press brake and I believe that's a laser. That's more, that's probably the filter and chiller for the new machine right there. That's in alone. And there's the new machine. Oh my gosh. Holy cow. Look at it. Holy cow. You can see it's got the rotating head. You can see that with the glare. Look at the back of it, I mean, just massive. They've got uh, the 125 out of the box. So I think you'd call this kind of the Ferrari, really, really fast, nimble, smaller tool holders, surfacing and awesomeness. And the one that we were looking at before the 85 monoblock is, is gonna be a little bit more rigid hogging. Oh, yeah. We, so, the way we say it, the BMF is like a big tractor. This yeah. is like a Ferrari. It's really nice. And then this is like a F1 car. Okay, that's it's better. Even faster. Even faster. Right, right. That's better. I like that. I like it. That's the truck. I mean, that thing is insane. These are the kind of machines where uh, you've got to, you know, they have GPS and positional sensors. If you try to move them, like in your factory to another factory, You've got to have them unlocked because they uh, regulate where and who can buy these machines because they're just that capable. Oh my gosh. You got to get keys into the machine. What do you, do you say this, the DMF weighs? Uh, 68 
68,000 pounds. 68,000 pounds. Holy cow, so e-stop it, be safe. Yeah, look at the chips coming out. <laughs> we're, these are 186 gallons, and when we're running this full production, we're every you know every five ten minutes we're putting new swap around. This is just the this is just the coolant filter system with the scroll filters, and now we can uh, take a walk inside the machine. The lighting might be terrible, but it's still worth it. Yeah, it's awesome. Flashlights. Step over the frame. Holy cow. Concrete composite base. Concrete composite base. So it's not just cast iron. It's this, It's concrete composite. The, what looks like a, a sidewalk flooring there, huh? Mm -hmm. That's your ball screw for your X-axis. Tool changer rides on this belt under some pulleys. So when Interesting. There, so this. Yeah, so we're looking straight back at the machine. That's the Z-axis double column right here and here. And then you said the tool changer kind of rides there you go, right there. Yes. Separate, but on the same track, using a belt instead of the screw. Yeah. Yeah, it's in kind of a bad position right now, then the magazine's over here. Yeah, yeah. Holy cow, another... Look at that. Oh my gosh. Sorry. Um, look at the size of this, the linear rails. I mean, look at... That's my fist. Actually, it's almost better without the light. That's my fist on the linear rail. Look at that. It's got to be three inches. It's like a... Yeah. <laughs> Insane. You could have a little party in here. Yeah, I was thinking about putting my office over here. <laughs> doesn't like it when you open the door when the machine's running. Wait, does that thing... That doesn't slide. Yeah, this is the magazine this, is actually separate from the cast. So okay, so this, it grabs the tool and then moves with you. This came on, I think, I think this was three semi trucks. Oh my god. For, for, for this machine. Wow. The main casting, they brought a 200 ton crane out just to lift it off the truck. Oh my god. Put it on the thing. Two Z axis screws there. They've got, you said they got encoders on them or scales. Oh, there's your Y. Yeah, Holy cow, we're looking at the Y. Whoa. Dude. So where does the new one machine, the, the uh, 125, fit into the scope here? It's it's more, it's not as rough. As it, well, oh, it's kind of it's really overlapping a lot of things. It is okay. The, I would say the DMF has the biggest, our our biggest table, obviously because it's 100 inch, but also this our one. biggest five axis platter ish for like plate work. Okay. Um, it, uh, both of these machines are capable of very similar parts. If you're talking like a large cylindrical part, the 125 actually has a bigger working envelope because the head goes farther away and actually has a bigger diameter. This is okay. like 43, 44, and the other one's 50. Okay. So, um, but the caveat to that 50, the way the kinematics are on the machine, as the, as the head kind of spins around, you can't machine on that whole part of the 50 inches. Hmm. Because of because of the thing, so okay. you have to kind of spin. You you could do two, you know, big plates or whatever. Spin one and then spin the table. And do it, but we can only reach about nine inches past center line okay. above on a fifty inch platter. So and you're programming all this, all, all these machines all with fusion. This is insane. No, believes me when I tell them that. Yeah, yeah. Um, you want to go look at the machine? I just poked oh, my head up, yeah, and it's. Uh, I kind of feel bad. I think I saw it before uh, you did. I've never seen, have you seen something like this? No, before? no, look at that, it's insane. This thing is, looks ancient, but they said, they said this thing could lift like what, 120, 125 ton, or thousand pounds? Pounds, yeah. This is, the, this is the cooler for all the ball screws and everything, the ball screws. Thermally vibrate. cooled. There's antifreeze that runs through that, so, you know, the thermal. Dimensionally stable. Like and that's why the DMF has that concrete casting for thermal deformation, you know, as, you know. It's a huge machine, right? I told these guys when they're opening the door, we had we were mixing parts last week, and they're like, why does the finish look different on these parts? I was like, shut the door, let it warm, warm back up, and then shut Yeah, it's a big door. Had just that little bit where two tools blend within a couple, you know, within a couple tenths of each other, um, the temperature change, you know, obviously, right. obviously change that. You, yeah. Dude. 
Yeah. channels to let the yeah these are just, just, just yeah right to let, to let the air yeah we Got found it. just by cutting the thing you have to have wherever the air is open is where it's actually sucking it down yeah. so the more you obviously can't hollow it out because then it'll you know yeah but when it's just sick it's awesome smaller, uh, really nice Since we filmed that, Devin has got the 125 duo block up and running. It's just insane. It's the same machine that we saw uh, when we were at the Emo show in Germany, which is just amazing. But I want to say thank you. We really appreciate him taking the time to show us around on a busy day when they're getting a new machine rigged in and really one of the most amazing shops and some of the most amazing equipment we've had the chance to see. Hope you enjoyed, folks. Take care. See you soon.